Hi guys, welcome back to the Do It Yourself YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you an easy way to change one of these horrible old pull cords, like this one, and I'll show you how to change that for a PIR. Obviously with the PIR, when you walk in the bathroom, this will detect your movement and turn the light on for you, and it'll eliminate this horrible cord. There's a little bit of wiring to jiggle around and that sort of thing, but it's quite a straightforward job and quite a nice little modification to your bathroom. This particular PIR here is just a lap one from Screwfix. Pretty inexpensive. I mean, you can get them in plenty of different shapes and sizes and from all different places, but I've used these ones before and they do the job just fine. So guys, before we make a start, please make sure you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe button down below. Let's face it, you should be subscribed already because there's some great content on the channel. If you like plumbing guides and electrical guides and things like that, then make sure you're subscribed because you're not going to want to miss out on all the content I've got to come. Now if you're a subscriber, you'll know that I always run through the tools and things you're going to need. It's a little bit difficult for this one, I would say, if you're undertaking this job, You've probably got some general electrical tools anyway, so make sure you've got all them to hand. Wire strippers, cutters, all that sort of thing. Make sure you've got the appropriate cable, which I'll show you when we start doing the job, because you're going to want the right cable for the job. And obviously make sure you've picked yourself a PIR up, whatever one you want to use. I must stress guys, this job does involve a little bit of wiring, so if you're not familiar with electrical practices, wiring, and the particular Part P regulations that you should be following, then please leave this one for a qualified electrician. But hopefully you're happy to give this one a go, and if so, then let's get started. So first of all, we're gonna get rid of this old pull cord. But before we go doing that, make sure that the circuit that you're working on, your upstairs or downstairs lighting circuit, is isolated, there's no power to it, and it's safe to work on. So the first step, we'll drop this cover down over the pull cord and see what we've got inside. Take the screws out, drop the cover for the pull cord down. The first thing you're going to notice is that you have two lives. What you've got here is this single cable, it's probably a 1.5mm cable, coming from the light that you've got in the, typically in the middle of your room. Now that runs directly from that light and inside that there's a neutral wire and a live wire However, that neutral wire there has been sleeved with a brown sleeve. Now what that means is that that is also alive now. So you've got one piece of wire coming from your light, which is a permanent live, that goes into the pull cord here. This brown sleeved wire, which was previously a neutral, but is now alive, allows the current to go back to the light, creating a circuit. Now I hear what you're thinking. Your PIR that you've bought needs a neutral wire, but in your existing setup, you probably don't have one. So that's where we need to do a little bit of jiggling around with the cables. But never fear, the Do It Yourself channel's here. Oh, that was cheesy, wasn't it? I'm gonna show you how to get around that. We now need to drop down our light fitting so that we can see the wiring that goes into the back of the light. Obviously, your light fitting will vary somewhat, but you just need to drop the light down so that you can see what's inside the rows as you can see there, there's a fair bit of wiring and I'll explain how that wiring works and what we need to do to, uh, to convert that over. So before we go any further, let me quickly show you on a drawing what you have now versus what you need with regards to the wiring. Right, so to make it easier to understand, what you have at the moment is typically your light fitting in the middle of the room. There's more cables involved in this, but this is the one we, we're interested in at the moment. That piece of cable coming out of the pull cord is this cable here, okay? Now that has three cores inside it. There's a live cable in here, which is brown, a neutral, which is blue, and an earth, which is green and yellow. However, all that's happening here, permanent live is coming from the light, that's the brown one. It's going through the switch when you pull that cord. This piece of neutral wire here, turns into a live wire as well. That's what that little brown piece of sleeving is that you can see on the cable. That power then runs back along what is now a switched live all the way back to the bulb illuminating the bulb. The earth wire is actually terminated inside the pull cord enclosure. What we need to do is find out inside our light fitting, which we'll look at next, we need to find out which wire this one is and we need to completely remove it. Right, so what we need to do now is find out which piece of wire we need to replace. 
if you're upstairs you'll be able to simply trace it so this is the wire coming out in the loft above our pull cord all you need to do is trace it through all the insulation it may be clipped it may not in this case it's not follow that piece of wire it runs all the way around there and goes into the top of where our rose is so you'll be able to actually find exactly which wire that is now some of you will be doing this downstairs so you won't necessarily be able to go up in a loft like I can here to actually see physically where that wire goes it might be through the middle of a joist they'll normally drill a hole and they'll run the cable through the center of the joist so if you're doing this downstairs you may need to grab hold of the piece of wire coming out where your pull cord is and at the rows here physically feel which wire it is that you're pulling the other end of what we're going to do now is we're going to drop the rows down to so take the two screws out drop down these two wires for your light bulb place this to the side don't damage it now what you need to do if it helps you take a photo of what you've got here right now before you start taking out any of these wires I will explain to you on a diagram what each one of them does but the easiest way is to actually take a photo and then put them back in the right place according to the photo that you take if you're not familiar with wire and circuits that is the easiest way to make sure you get them back in the right place but what we need to do now is undo each one of those wires take the earths out first just pull everything to the side for now and we'll start on our neutrals and the lives then the permanent lives and then our switched lives again keep this safe lay it to the side for now so what you'll be able to do now is pull this cable and if, like I say, if you're doing this downstairs, you'll now start to feel a bit of tension because you'll be pulling it through the centre of a joist, more than likely. So keep pulling. If it feels like it locks up and snags, then stop pulling. And you're going to have to find a way to gain access to the cable. Obviously, in my case, I'm just pulling it through insulation in the loft. So this is purely for demonstration purposes. And it will be the one with the brown sleeve on reason for that is that's a switched live you see that brown sleeve on there that means it's a switched live so you'll notice that that will be the one that you're pulling through now don't pull that right through yet you must stop now what you now need to do is grab your four core length of cable because like I said before we need a neutral wire for a PIR so you need to link this four core piece of cable to this wire here because if you're pulling this through a joist or a ceiling cavity what we need to do is actually pull our new wire through so the way you're going to do this is wrap these wires together and then I like to tape them together as well and then what you'll do is you'll pull the end of your wire again and pull your four core piece of wire all the way through and with a bit of luck this will end up coming out of your ceiling where your existing pull cord is and where your PIR is going to be in my case I can just do this from the loft so I don't need to link those two wires together so now we'll pull that wire out so you can now chuck this to the side what you need to do now is remove this pull cord casing and that can be thrown in the bin you don't need that anymore right so before we go any further we need to cut a hole in for our PIR the instructions you've got with the PIR will normally tell you exactly what diameter hole saw you need to be using to make this fit when you actually make this hole you need to make sure that you don't hit a joist above there's a joist in my case running just here but it's far enough away that my hole saw is not going to hit that joist if your hole saw is going to hit a joist above what you're going to need to do is just move it over slightly you can always fill these holes here afterwards so it doesn't matter if you move the PIR over slightly so go ahead and cut the hole for the PIR so now pull the springs back on the PIR and you'll find 
that that will just fall into place. In my case, there's only one little bit of filling to do, but we'll be able to pull the PIR down afterwards, fill and paint and repair this piece of sealant. So you'll have a nice finish there. But as you can see, that's where that's gonna end up. So pull that back down and then we can go back to our wiring. Right, so I'll explain to you a little bit about the wiring so that when we actually go back to the ceiling rows here, you'll be able to come and refer back to this. This area from the screwdriver above, let's say that's within the loft. So this area here, these wires are all running within the loft. In fact, if I put this blue line across here, all of that is loft space or possibly floor cavity if you're working downstairs. So I'll make it as simple as possible for you to understand. This cable here comes in from the previous room, supplying power to this whole light setup in the bathroom. Now, once it reaches our ceiling rows, it splits off to a permanent live into this terminal here. This wire here goes to our next room, so that exits our ceiling rows and continues our circuit through to the next room. That has a neutral, an earth, and a live. That has to be connected to our previous room, which also has a live, a neutral, and an earth. Our light bulb here, all that has is a live wire that's controlled by a switch live, and a neutral wire. So what happens is the power comes in from the previous room, it then leaves via our PIR cable that we've now replaced with a three core plus earth wire. It travels up the live conductor and goes into our live in in our PIR. It then lights our bulb via this live out wire represented in grey with a brown sleeve. That comes out here in our ceiling rows, goes into our switched live terminal and then what that does is feeds the live wire to the bulb. There's also a neutral within this cable here represented in black. This neutral we're not using because we only need one. And this earth here, we've terminated because we don't need it. Every cable here has an earth which should be wired into our earthing terminal on the ceiling rows. Every wire also has a neutral which also should go into the neutral terminal on the ceiling rows. The only real complicated bit is that grey wire that we've brought back from our three core plus earth which must go into the switch live terminal. In my case, that also controls a spotlight on the other side of the room, which is represented by this cable here. It's linked to our switch live so that it only comes on once the PIR tells it to come on. That'll come on at the same time as our main bulb. So if you only have one light in your room, this cable here, which says spotlight next to it, won't apply to you. So when we now go back to the ceiling and put this in practice, if you have any problems, refer back to the diagram. As I said earlier, if you're doing this downstairs and you don't have access to the cables, you'll have already pulled this through as I show you. In my case, I'm now gonna run this through the loft from our rose fitting to the hole that we've just made for the PIR. And now you've got the end of your wire hanging out here and then a tail hanging out where your PIR is going to go as well. What we'll do now is we'll wire up the PIR and we'll put it in place. The rest of the wiring work can be done at the light rose fitting. So we can actually wire the PIR up, pop that in the hole and we don't need to worry about that anymore. On the back of this PIR in particular, these are push fittings. So all I'm going to do is strip the wires back and push them in the appropriate terminals. Strip that outer sheaf off, separate the wires, strip a little bit off the end of each conductor. As per the diagram, the live out is grey, that's returning back to the light bulb, but we need to indicate that that is a live wire, so we put a brown piece of sleeve on there. So we have our live in on brown, in this case I just push this in the terminal, neutral wire is our black wire, we only need to put one neutral in, push that in to the neutral terminal. The earth wire, fold that out of the way for now because we don't actually need that. And our live out is the grey wire. This earth wire we don't need, just stick a bit of earth sleeving on it and you can actually terminate that into a little connector block. 
doesn't really matter what sort of connector block you, you use but just terminate it off there just secure that in place with the little clamp you can see there that is now wired up we can worry about the settings on the PIR later you can now feed that up into the hole and that is pretty much done apart from our little seal and repair that we need to do there I'll now show you how to put your light fitting back in place and wire it into the seal and rails. Feed all the wires back through the seal and rails plate, including our new wire. And then you can screw that back in place where it was before. So this wire here is to the spotlight that I referred to on the diagram. So you may not have this wire here, but if you do have multiple lights, first of all, put your neutrals in. So that neutral goes in there, along with this neutral, which runs to our next room. Do all these up, and once you, once you do all these up, just give them a little pull to make sure they're in properly. And this neutral wire here, comes from our previous room. Again, that goes into the neutral terminal. So all of our neutrals go together. The live that's bent over here is a switched live. Leave that to the side at the moment. That runs to the spotlight. This live here and this live here are from our previous room and then they continue the circuit to the next room. So they need to both be in the permanent live terminal here. We'll do those ones up. This live here that we bent over is the live wire to the spotlight, which will be controlled by the PIR. So that goes into the switched live terminal there. Now we can put these two earth wires into our earthing terminal. Just leave them there for now. We don't need to do that up at the moment. Now what we need to do is put our new cable for the PIR in. What you need to do is just judge how much you need to strip back. So where it exits the ceiling to the terminals, I'd suggest you strip it somewhere there. Separate the wires. The bare earth wire needs to be sleeved with earth sleeving. This is our live feed to the PIR. This is a neutral wire. And this is our switched live that returns from the PIR. So we need to sleeve that with a brown sleeve because we need to indicate that grey is now alive. So the switch live with the brown sleeve on, that needs to go into the switch live terminal. Put that in and do it up. The neutral wire goes into the neutral terminal. Put that in, do it up. And the permanent live goes into the live terminal. And the earth goes into our earth and terminal. And then you do all those earths up together. Now all we need to do is wire the neutral and the live in for the bulb. That neutral wire has to be in the neutral terminal. Do that up, it can be a little bit fiddly, now you've got quite a lot of wires in there. And then put your live wire for your bulb into the live terminal. Then all you need to do is just screw the fitting back in place. As you can tell, we have light, so that is job done. Once you've turned your consumer unit back on and you have power to the circuit again, you can fiddle with the PIR set and just pull the PIR down and you'll normally be able to adjust two little screws on the side of the PIR that will allow you to set the time and the brightness and things like that. They normally tell you how to do that on the back of the box so I ain't going to bother going through that. As you can tell we have light to the main bulb in the bathroom and in this case a vanity spotlight and it is all now controlled by the PIR. All you need to do now is repair whatever damage you made to the ceiling with a bit of filler and paint and head up into your loft and tidy up any cables. If this video has helped you out, give me a like and make sure you're subscribed because there's loads of content coming up in the future. Oh, and I'll put a little link in the top of the screen here where you can see some of my other electrical guides because there's a few other helpful videos that might be worth watching too. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.